I prithee, send me back my heart, since I cannot have thine. For if from yours you will not part, why then shouldst thou have mine? Yet now I think on let it lie, to find it were in vain, for thou'st a thief in either eye would steal it back again. Why should two hearts in one breast lie, and yet not lodge together? O oh, love, where is thy sympathy, if thus our breasts thou sever? But love is such a mystery, I cannot find it out, for when I think I'm best resolved, I then am in most doubt. Then farewell, care, and farewell, woe, I will no longer pine, for I'll believe I have her heart as much as she hath mine. That was a poem by John Suckling, first published in 1659. Its title is just Song. I think there's an idea in this poem that's really compelling. He combines cleverly, I think, the idea of possession and thievery with being in love. How does he do it? The first stanza sets up the idea. It's clear when the poetic speaker says, send me back my heart, the loved one whom is being addressed possesses the speaker's heart in some sense. So we have the ideas of possession and being in love linked in some way. Here's the first stanza again. I prithee, send me back my heart, since I cannot have thine. For if from yours you will not part, why then shouldst thou have mine? I think this puts a very real thing figuratively. When you're deeply in love with someone, your mind and emotions are so taken over by thoughts and feelings about this person, it's like your own mind and heart are not yours. They're overwhelmed with something external, and you have no control. Your heart is possessed by another. Of course, this stanza is really a complaint. It's clear right away the loved one in this poem doesn't feel the same way. Then the next stanza is, on second thought, don't bother about giving it back, because your eyes are like thieves that will just steal back my heart. In other words, just by seeing you again and looking into your eyes, it'll be enough for me once again to fall in love with you. Here's that second stanza again. Yet now I think on let it lie, to find it were in vain, for thou'st a thief in either eye, would steal it back again. But something happens at stanza three till the end. They're hardly related to each other, and also don't develop that initial idea. The poem just runs out of energy. I think stanzas one and two sound more like the crowning conclusion of an idea, not like a beginning. I think it would have been a more satisfying design if stanzas one and two had been at the end. With the preceding stanzas building up a complaint with this idea of love and possession until the climax brings in thievery with a shift that says, in essence, forget this complaint, the situation's hopeless, I'll love you even if you don't love me. For all these reasons, I think this poem is a ruby in the rough. Share what you think in the comments below. Do you also feel this sudden drop in energy? And what do you think of Suckling's figurative use of language? That's all for now. See you next time.